What is going on, everybody? Welcome to another edition of Madden Sunday School. This is going to be episode four. And in this episode, we're going to cover everything that has to do with yellow zones or as they're more traditionally called, hook zones. So there's four uh, different hook zones here. I'm in a cover three Mabel type of coverage. Uh, the four different types are a hook curl, is which is what you see on this play. You have your mid reads, your vertical hooks, and your three receiver hooks. So we're going to cover all four of them uh, today. And we're just going to go ahead and start off with the hook curl. Uh, they're probably the simplest. Uh, they're the ones you're going to see basically in cover three style coverages. So right here is actually a cover three Mabel type style on the right side with the curl flat and hard flat. But you're still going to get the hook curls over the middle. So your hook curl is traditionally going to play basically the simplest out of all of them. They're going to play most of the time just that normal hook zone behavior that you've come, become accustomed to uh, from playing Madden over the years. Basically, it's just going to patrol that middle area of the field just where their zone highlights. They're going to be looking for in-breaking routes, stuff like slants, ends, you know, drags, deep digs behind them, stuff like that. They're going to go and carry with them and, and just kind of slide around the, the middle of the field and just patrol that area. Now, there is a case uh, that you're going to see in a little bit where uh, they will leave that area. But for now, we can just run some stock plays and take a look at them right here. Going to go ahead and put Taylor Gabriel on a slant route. And you're going to just see the hook curls do a good job of crossing it o over him. Right there, Gabriel uh, kind of found a little opening. But... You can just kind of see their normal behavior just by watching the play where the hook curls kind of go right there. Dante Hightower jumped the route and picked it off. So that's kind of what the hook curls are good for over the middle of the field. Just looking out for different intermediate routes, slant routes. If I put Jacob Tammy, say, on like a deep in route right there, uh, you can expect Dante Hightower uh, to be on that and then pass him off to Shame or uh, whoever that other linebacker is right there. It might be Ninkovich. I'm not positive, uh, but... Uh, that's basically the behavior you're going to see. As you can see, he passes him off, and he ends up being double covered, and he ends up making a play on the ball right there. So that's kind of what you're going to see uh, from those standard hook curls. Now, there is a case where the hook curl can convert to man-to-man -to -man match coverage and basically take over the flat, and that is against cover three match style coverages. So right here, cover three match, you can know it is cover three match because of the seam flats on the outsides. And now what you're going to see from the hook curl is that the hook curl on the side of the coverage that converts to match coverage will convert if there are any routes that are attacking the flat that is left open by that seam flat. So, for example, if you haven't watched the Purple Zone, uh, my episode on Purple Zones, that was last week's episode, episode 3, I went over these seam flats, but... Basically, you're going to see out of this formation, the backside seam flat on the left-hand side is going to match against Taylor Gabriel, and that's going to make uh, this seam or this hook curl defender right here, Shea McClellan, who I called Rob Ninkovich a minute ago, but you're going to see Shea McClellan, he's going to play his hook curl, but if any route threatens that left side flat where, you know, Eric Rowe left open whenever he converted the match coverage on Taylor Gabriel, he's going to play that receiver. So, for instance, if I were to put Taylor Gabriel on a street or on a slant rather, and then drag Jacob Tammy, what you're gonna see is Shea McClellan is going to convert off of this hook curl, and he's gonna basically convert to man-to-man -man coverage against Jacob Tammy. So, snap the ball here, and you see how he jumps down. And that wasn't me using him; that was uh, I just so happened to be on him. I'll go ahead and get on a defensive tackle. Maybe I can get a little more pass protection here on this play, so you can see it develop a little more. But you're going to see here how he runs out to the flat. Notice how he's completely matched onto him now. He's no longer playing that hook curl spot. He's completely uh, playing man-to-man -man coverage on Jacob Tammy. So that is the one case that you will see a hook curl abandon its normal, you know, just standard over-the-middle type coverage is if the seam flat on its side of the field converts to man-to-man -man coverage, then the responsibility of guarding the flat falls to the hook curl. So that is... Um, zone number one uh, the second zone I want to go over is the three receiver hook so let's go ahead and uh, we're gonna come out and tray open here we're gonna come out in HP angle and so now the three receiver hook is something you see a lot in either cover one or cover four so in this case let's go ahead and go cover one 
So you see in the middle right there, uh, Roberts is on a three receiver hook. So a three receiver hook, you're going to see basically play the same as a hook curl over the middle of the field. But uh, the reason it is called a three receiver hook is that he will always take his first steps of the play towards the third receiver in the formation. So this means whichever side of the formation has three receivers, um, three or more receivers, he will always take his first step basically to the innermost receiver on that side so for this example you're gonna see he will always take his step towards Jacob Tammy on the left side since you have Julio Jones Taylor Gabriel and Jacob Tammy all to the left and then Freeman and Muhammad Sanu on the right he will always take his first steps uh, towards Jacob Tammy and that can be a good thing sometimes and it can be a bad thing so you're gonna see snap the ball here you're gonna see how he floats Floats towards Jacob Tammy and then comes back over the middle of the field and defends against that angle route that was being run by Devonta Freeman. And we can go into instant replay and take kind of a closer look at it. And you can kind of tell how this would be a good thing or a bad thing. It's a good thing because he's always going to focus, say, if Jacob Tammy's running a route over the middle of the field, then <clears throat> he's going to be all over it. Um, your, your third receiver in the formation is going to have a tough time getting open against this basically bracketed coverage. And then uh, with uh, Donta High or, or Roberts actually being pretty decent in zone coverage, he's going to break off of it and you know sit on that angle route by Devonta Freeman. But where this can be kind of a bad thing is say in this scenario, Jacob Tammy's running a route that you know isn't even going over the middle of the field. You see he's running a about a 15-yard out route there as he cuts and completely leaves his defender behind. But if uh, Roberts is preoccupied with following Tammy who's not even running a route over the middle of the field then that leaves opportunity I probably could have squeezed this ball in right here to Devonta Freeman or if uh, on the backside Muhammad Sanu was running a you know a slant or an in route you know that would kind of leave an open area right there as you're gonna see right here I can go ahead and demonstrate it so basically just imagine if I put Devonta Freeman on a swing and Muhammad Sanu on a slant and so same cover one setup on defense uh, from the Patriots here you're gonna see he drifts with Jacob Tammy which lets me throw that backside slant to Muhammad Sanu so basically uh, these three receiver hooks are good at bracketing a certain receiver uh, like a slot receiver but uh, they do leave the backside open because of the fact that they do take that first step and they do drift uh, towards a certain receiver on the field so right there you saw uh, the ball got swatted down but basically if I can complete this pass over the middle here, right there, uh, most people playing cover one would be like, how is that pass getting completed? Like, it was right over, directly over the middle of the field. Like, that's where my hook zone should be at. It's literally right exactly over the middle of the field. I'm catching it almost in the middle of the hash marks. My hook zone should be right there. It's because it's a three receiver hook, and he's always going to drift towards the side of that third receiver. So, always keep that in mind when playing cover one or cover four. Um, the, the middle hook zone in a cover four type setup, traditional cover four where you rush four, drop seven, uh, has a three receiver hook in the middle in between those two quarter flat zones. So always keep that in mind when running a cover four, you're gonna see the same exact behavior. Okay, so now getting into the two most trickiest hook zones in my opinion, are both seen in standard Tampa 2 coverages, and it is the mid-read and the vertical hook. So first, I'm, I want to go over the mid-read. So the mid-read right here with Seth Roberts, typically you see it out of the middle linebacker in whatever coverage you're running. Um, it's going to be basically ch in charge of defending that middle to deep area of the field you can see where his zone is at he also has the ability to drop and basically become a third deep zone between those two safeties since that is a weak point of cover two but basically what he is going to do is he's going to match to whatever side has the most receivers so he's going to look for the strong side of the formation so in this case i'm in a trio type of formation to the left so he's going to be focused on the left side of the formation with sanu gabriel and julio and basically he's going to look and see okay are there any routes that are stretching the defense vertically are there any routes that are just running straight downfield whether it be a streak route a seam route a post route whatever it is is there any route that's attacking you know that deep area between the two safeties if so he's gonna match onto it and basically carry it all the way upfield so in this case what you're gonna see here I have Julio Jones running a seam route in this play and what you should see is that Roberts here is going to basically identify the strong side of the formation 
look at Julio and notice, okay, he's running a seam route up the seam. I need to follow him. And so he's going to basically convert to man-to-man -to -man coverage right here. So snap the ball. You see he's looking at Julio, looking at Julio, and he's running all the way downfield to him. He's at that point, uh, whenever I got sacked, I didn't get much time in the pocket, but whenever I got sacked, he completely had his back turned to him and was just following him downfield at that point. So what you're going to see again right here, he's completely following Julio. And obviously a linebacker on someone like Julio isn't an ideal matchup, but uh, that is what you're going to get uh, with this middle read route, or middle read zone rather. It doesn't matter uh, basically where the route is coming from off that left side. He will follow it if there are no other routes uh, basically taking up his zone. Now, if there aren't any routes going vertically downfield, you'll basically just see the normal hook zone behavior from him. He just becomes kind of a read. You see he's focused on that left side at first. But then now he just sits in the middle and basically becomes a third. I mean, you could see on the outsides there of the cover two, you have two vertical hooks. And he looked like he was playing just like the two vertical hooks. So he becomes just another hook zone if there aren't any routes that are stretching him downfield. But that's something you can easily tell uh, in his behaviors that at the snap of the ball, you can see he's looking at that left side of the field and saying, okay, there's nothing stretching me. So now I can afford to kind of play more aggressively, play up right there. He almost swatted that ball down from Muhammad Sanu. And, and that's kind of the behavior uh, that you're going to expect. Now, if I were to motion Julio, say I streak Jacob Tammy and motion Julio over, what you're going to see now is he's going to follow Jacob Tammy up the field since now the right side of the field is the strong side because, because of my motion. Now Julio, uh, now they have three receivers to the right because Julio joined the right side of the field. So now that becomes his focus. Whatever side has the most receivers, he's going to follow that side. And Devonta Freeman, in this case, counts as a receiver. He's on the right side of the quarterback. So that's why the right side then becomes the strong side over to the left. And you're going to see uh, that similar behavior where he's going to follow uh, Jacob Tammy up the field. Now, in this case here, uh, say um, I have two streaking receivers here. Uh, what you're going to see is it doesn't matter. Uh, like I said, he's going to look at the strong side of the field. So right there, once again, he ran with Julio now basically that's all the behavior you need to know about the mid read just know he's gonna be looking at the strong side of the field checking to see if anything's pushing him vertically if so he will follow it if not then he kinda converts and just becomes another hook zone over the middle of the field basically identical to say like a vertical hook so now uh, getting into the fourth and final one that was a good segue into the vertical hook so vertical hooks basically are similar to mid reads in the fact that they have the ability to convert to match coverage against routes that push them up the field vertically but they only do it in certain situations and they can only do it against inside receivers so basically it's if an inside receiver is pushing them vertically along with the fact that there are no other routes that are like attacking the initial area of the field that they're supposed to cover and so it's kind of hard to put in the words but you're gonna see it here in a minute Basically, in this formation, you're going to see the weak side mid-read. So in this case, it's going to be right here, the, the man I'm usered on right here, Donta Hightower. He's going to be the one uh, that converts to match coverage more often than not. And so a way to do that, you might say, okay, if I streak Jacob Tammy, Hightower should convert to match coverage, right? But not in this case because of the fact that um, Jacob Tammy, in this case, he, might, he looks like an inside receiver because he's flexed out you know very tightly to that right tackle but he's not technically an inside receiver because there are no receivers to the outside of him so in this case say I streak Jacob Tammy and say now I motion out Devonta Freeman now you will see Donta Hightower is going to follow Jacob Tammy upfield and play that match coverage or at least he should so right here you see now he turns and runs and now he's running downfield with Jacob Tammy as I let it fly and Jacob Tammy about the Moss four people but that didn't happen. So uh, that's basically the behavior you're going to see now. If I were to streak Jacob Tammy and motion out Devonta Freeman right there, I put him on a streak. If I were to put Devonta Freeman on a slant, now what you're going to see is Donta Hightower actually doesn't convert to match coverage because of the fact he fo he'll follow and drift with Tammy, but then he'll recognize, okay, I have Devonta Freeman running a slant right into my zone. I need to clamp down on that. So if there are no routes attacking his zone, then he'll follow Tammy, but if there is, he'll peel off and clamp down on the route that attacks his zone. So right here, he's dropping back, dropping back, and then you see he kind of 
falters at that last second, it's kind of tough to see in real time. So we'll go into instant replay here. Um, but what you're going to see is how he drops back. He's going to drop back, drop back. So he's dropping with Tammy. And then he sees Devonta Freeman coming underneath and see that quick, you know, put the left foot in the ground, plant, and then clamp down. He doesn't really clamp down right here. He doesn't clamp super hard. But basically it pulls him out of that, you know, coverage on Jacob Tammy and pulls him back underneath uh, to kind of say, okay, I need to stop following Jacob Tammy and look for these routes underneath. So that's the kind of expected behavior you can, or that's the behavior you can expect out of these uh, vertical hooks. So right here, what you're going to see, say in this case, I motion Muhammad Sanu over and put him on a, on, on a fade route. So now the right side of the field becomes the strong side, right? Three receivers, Muhammad Sanu, Jacob Tammy, Devonta Freeman, all to the right. So the mid read who is on, a, who is, I'm on right now, uh, Roberts, is going to focus on this right side of the field. So what you're going to see is that this weak side vertical hook, Eric Rowe right here, has the potential to match on to Julio running this seam route up the field. Since the mid read is going to be occupied with the right side of the field, he's going to be looking more towards Jacob Tammy, Muhammad Sanu routes like that. So now the weak side vertical hook has the responsibility to say, okay, if I'm being pushed up field by an inside slot receiver such as Julio, I need to be able to go ahead and follow him up field. So what you're going to see here, he presses him, and he actually doesn't follow him. So in that case, uh, Eric Rowe must not have felt that Julio uh, was enough of a threat, which obviously he was. But let's see, maybe if we motion over Taylor Gabriel, I'm going to try and get that weak side uh, flat zone, or the weak side vertical hook actually, uh, to go ahead and match to Julio. In this case, he might have a better chance of doing it right here. So let's see, press coverage, and right there he matches. So I think what might have been uh, the issue right there as Julio still gets behind the defense uh, might have been that uh, because of the fact that Taylor Gabriel is still kind of flexed in, Julio might not have been considered a true inside receiver in this situation because that is a key component of these vertical hooks is that they will only match against inside receivers. That's something to remember. They will not match against outside receivers who run like post routes over the middle or whatever. It has to be an inside slot receiver who has a receiver to the outside of him. So in this case, let's see right here if Eric Rowe decides to match. So right here, yeah, so he matched right there. So I think what the problem was was that I put um, Taylor Gabriel on an out route. I think basically the vertical hook will match if the other receiver on that side of the field is also stretching the defense vertically. So that is also something to keep in mind. But that's why I think vertical hooks and mid reads are the two trickiest of these uh, two kind of different uh, zones, I guess you see. And they're both in cover two, and they both kind of play off of each other, right? You know, the, the vertical hook is assigned basically to match to whatever side the mid read isn't assigned to. So that's also something uh, to keep in mind. But Basically, that's going to be the end of the video, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed. I know uh, there was a lot of information coming at you. These zones can be tricky, and even myself, whenever I'm explaining them, I know sometimes I get tongue-tied, and I'm kind of thinking of, you know, the best way to explain it. Hook curls and th or hook, yeah, hook curls and three receiver zones aren't uh, the worst, but obviously mid reads and vertical hooks can get tricky because of the fact, like I just said, their behavior plays off of each other and all the different conditions that they need uh, to satisfy to match coverage and whatnot. But hopefully this video kind of gave you an understanding foundation of these hook zones. And uh, hopefully, you know, it's going to come with repetition. The more you see it, the more you, uh, you know, the, pra the more you practice it, the more you play against it, uh, you're going to get it down packed. No problem. But like I said, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Definitely comment. Let me know what you thought. Let me know what I can do better for future video, guys. And until next time, take it easy.